When it was first discovered by Europe, the Caribbean was thought to be a gateway to El Dorado, a city of gold. In the centuries since, gold has been mined and black gold has been extracted. But more precious Caribbean treasures remain, and Dr. Adesh Ramsubag is at the forefront of discovering them. Well, we know the tropical environment, uh, especially this Caribbean region, is a hot spot for, for drug discovery. That is well established. And what happens right now is that a lot of foreign companies, a lot of foreign research institutes are coming, taking our biological resources. So we don't know to what extent they are developing drugs from our bioresources, but we know that their bioprospecting is taking place. The whole world is in a constant search for new antimicrobials. So this country, as well as this region, is gifted with a high level of natural biodiversity. I mean the microbial biodiversity, where we have uh, chances of uh, identifying new microorganisms which are supposed to produce novel molecules which are of potential antimicrobial and antibiotic activity. So my research involves discovering and developing novel antibiotics from microorganisms in Trinidad. But the uses to which Dr. Ramsubag's work and research may be put are not always conventional. So what we're looking at is using the indigenous microorganisms and using them to solubilize the oil, encourage more oil and heavier oil to come out of the formations. I've been doing this research for about a year and a half now, and we already have significant results. Dr. Ramsubag was very instrumental in designing the project, um, and he's been a source of encouragement, you know, throughout all the little hiccups we've had so far. So we expect this to be patented within this year. It has to go through clinical trials, which means that it could possibly reach the market if everything goes well within three years. Today, Adesh Ramsubag is a microbiologist and geneticist, but he began his adult life as a farmer in South Trinidad. So I grew up in a very rural and agricultural village where the center of life was, was agriculture. So I became a farmer and I was a registered farmer. And I heard about the agriculture program where I can come in and and do the A-level equivalent, the sciences that are the prerequisites for the agriculture program. So I came in to do the BSc in agriculture, and then I became exposed to the sciences in depth. And I was gravitated towards biological sciences. I love genetics, you know, I, I was inspired by the lecturers. And along the way, I found uh, many mentors. His beginnings drove him to ground his scientific knowledge in real life. He worked with Kariri, putting science to practical use. I became exposed to a wide range of issues affecting the wider society. Farmers, because they don't have proper guidance from relevant agencies, they are on their own basically relying on the chemical companies for advice. And often they will be applying chemicals in excess quantities. And we are now in the process of developing manuals as well as publishing the data, which will become available to the wider public. He joined the University of the West Indies in 2001 as a teacher and researcher. His research has spread the entire breadth of microbiology, working from industrial microbiology to agricultural bio uh, microbiology and medical microbiology and so on. So I think uh, therein lies his uh, strength, you know, as a researcher. For all the breakthroughs, though, the future might not be as rosy as it seems. Since the society does not seem to have its priorities straight, plowing money into unprofitable pursuits, but little on science. We have tremendous potential in biotechnology as a whole um, for economic development. Today, Cuba is uh, exporting pharmaceuticals and other biotechnological products in, in large quantities, you know, worth hundreds of millions of US dollars. They are a major player in the world right now. But Cuba has been investing in research and technology significantly, particularly in biotechnology. From the 80s, come back, you know. If you look at a country like South Korea, almost 4% of their GDP goes towards research and development. In the US, almost 3%. Unfortunately, in Trinidad, it's very, very insignificant. Our 
uh, GDP spending in, in research and development is less than 0.05 of 1%. We may even have more potential of developing new drugs than, than Cuba. At a time when the economy is not we're doing very well, you know, and we are looking for alternatives, you know, this is an area I think that we should get into. The only thing that is missing is significant investments in, in research. For championing the causes of science and education, for his brilliance in deriving potentially game-changing scientific discoveries, and for his dedication to his country, his students, and his work, Dr. Adesh Ramsubag of Trinidad and Tobago is the 2018 Anthony N. Sabga Caribbean Awards for Excellence Laureate in Science and Technology.